The U.S. Navy's top officer has said that the fires on the WASP-class amphibious assault ship USS Bonham Richard has caused extensive damage. Viewers may note that the fire continued for four days. Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Michael Gilday, in a letter to the service admirals and master chiefs, said the fire caused extensive damage to the ship. There is fire and water damage to varying degrees on 11 of 14 decks, Gilday wrote. With the flight deck as a reference, I walked sections of the ship five levels below and had the opportunity to examine the superstructure. The island is nearly gutted, as are sections of some of the decks below, some perhaps nearly encompassing the 844 length and 106 foot beam of the ship. Naval Sea System Commander's detailed assessment is ongoing. Sections of the flight deck are warped or bulging. Gilday stated, while response from the crew and Federal firefighters was rapid, preliminary reports indicate that there were two main factors that contributed to the intensity, scope, and speed of the fire, Gilday wrote. First was wind that fueled the fire as the vehicle storage area leads to the well deck, which opens to the air at the stern gate. The second were the explosions, one in particular reportedly heard about 13 miles away. This video is sponsored by the free-to-play military vehicle combat game War Thunder. We talk a lot about military vehicles on this channel, but what about trying them out for yourself? In War Thunder, you can choose from more than 1,200 playable vehicles from the 1930s to the 1990s and go to battle on more than 80 theaters of war. You can fly aircraft, helicopters, drive tanks, and command ships of all types and sizes, which have been carefully recreated from their real-world counterparts. It's available as a free download on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One with cross-platform support, so grab your friends and give it a try. All viewers of Defense Updates that register using the link in the description below will also get a free premium tank, aircraft, or ship and three days of premium account time as a bonus. Satellite images indicate that China has deployed at least eight fighter jets this month to an artificial island in the South China Sea. According to a report that day by the U.S. government-funded Radio Free Asia, the aircraft, including four that appear to be J-11B fighters and four that have the same dimensions as the JH-7 anti-ship fighter bomber, are visible in the images from July 17th. The aircraft were on a runway at Woody Island, China's largest military base in the Paracels, a group of islets in the northern part of the South China Sea. It's also claimed by Taiwan and Vietnam. The deployment comes at a time of increasing tensions in the region between the U.S. and China. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo on July 13th officially stated that China's sweeping claims to South China Sea are unlawful. The Chinese fighter jets deployment to Woody Island shows Beijing's intention of militarization in the South China Sea. In a major move to bolster the capabilities of the Indian Armed Forces, India has started the process to acquire six more Poseidon 8i aircraft from the United States at a cost of around $1.8 billion. The P-8 Poseidon is developed by Boeing and is modified from the 737-800ERX. It's capable of anti-submarine warfare (ASW), anti-surface warfare (ASUW), and shipping interdiction. It also has early warning self-protection (EWSP) ability. The P-8 is equipped with radar, optical, and sonar sensors to detect submarines and surface ships. The P-8 features the Raytheon APY-10 multi-mission surface search radar. P-8 is also able to drop and monitor sonar buoys, which are expendable sonar systems. Powered by two CF-M56 7B27A turbofans that are capable of generating 121 kilonewtons of thrust, it's able to reach a maximum speed of 490 knots or 907 kilometers per hour. It has a combat radius of 1,200 nautical miles or 2,222 kilometers 
that enables it to cover large swaths of ocean. It has a top speed of Mach 0.73. India already has eight of the P-8I aircraft, which are being used for surveillance missions over the Indian Ocean. The People's Liberation Army Air Force is sending military aircraft toward Taiwan on a regular basis as hostility in the region peak. Taiwan's Foreign Minister Joseph Wu spoke to the press on Wednesday, stating that PLAAF flights are practically a daily occurrence, and PLA invasion exercises only serve to cause more concern. Wu said, What it's doing now is increasingly preparing to use force to resolve the Taiwan problem. According to the Associated Press, Wu noted that China has become somewhat confident after it effectively absorbed Hong Kong and initiated a crackdown to suppress dissidents. If international society does not give China a sufficiently clear signal, I believe China will take it that international society will not impede in it doing other things. Wu said, This is what we are extremely worried about. The minister noted that alliances with Japan and the USA are crucial for Taiwan's survival, but that the Taiwanese people must also step up. Taiwan's vice defense minister, Cheng Guangcheng, had earlier said, At the height of outbreak of the pandemic worldwide, if the Chinese communists attempted to make any military adventure leading to regional conflict, they would be condemned by the world, and regardless of what would happen, we are all ready and have made the best preparation for this. The head of U.S. Space Force, the U.S. military's newest branch, has stated that the Russian government has conducted two on-orbit anti-satellite weapon tests in the past three years. General John William J. Raymond told Time, Russia is developing on-orbit capabilities that seek to exploit our reliance on space-based systems. He explained that on July 15, 2020, a satellite identified as Cosmos 2543 launched a projectile that could be used to destroy another craft in space. These revelations come around six months after the U.S. military expressed concern about a Russian inspector satellite that seemed to be shadowing an American KH-11 spy satellite. The Kremlin describes Cosmos 2543, also sometimes written with a K, as a space apparatus inspector. The satellite is designed to inspect other satellites and thought to be built to provide Russian officials a way to investigate problems or assess damage to other space assets. But there are concerns that the actual purpose could be more sinister and that these could be used as killer satellites. There is a possibility that the satellite has offensive capability and could damage and destroy satellite of a rival through electronic warfare jamming, directed energy weapons, ramming into the target, or even launching projectiles. There are indications that Russia has been testing these means though the exact progress on this is not known. U.S., Australia, and Japan have joined forces for a massive trilateral exercise that's being held in the Indo-Pacific region over the coming months. The collaboration brings together the Australian Defense Forces, U.S. Navy, U.S. Air Force, and the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force, which are engaged in the regional deployment. The Royal Australian Air Force RAAF, has dispatched a formidable fleet of fighters, tankers, and an airborne early warning aircraft to Anderson Air Force Base on the U.S. Pacific island of Guam as part of the regional presence deployment. Maneuvers will be carried out from July 21st to August 2nd. Australian and Japanese naval flotillas joined the U.S. Navy's Nimitz-class aircraft carrier USS Ronald Reagan, CVN-76, and its carrier strike group in the Philippine Sea on July 19th. It marked the start of the joint exercises that are taking place throughout Southeast Asia and will later move on to Hawaii. It's important to note that the U.S. has strong relations with both Australia and Japan. 
The exercise is designed to send a message to China, which has been posturing aggressively in the region. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your feedback in the comment section. This will help us improve.